In my previous video, I showed you how to get the Ruby on Rails feature Webpacker to include and compile style sheets, JavaScript, and image assets into your web application. In this video, I want to take a look at Webpacker from a higher level perspective and provide a few ideas on whether or not this feature should be used in your application. First, let's take a look at Sprockets, also known as the Rails Asset Pipeline. Is it getting deprecated? At the time that I made my Webpacker video tutorial, that does not seem to be the case. A fresh Rails 6.1 project includes both Sprockets and Webpacker. By default, Webpacker is set up to compile JavaScript files, and Sprockets is still the default for CSS and images. But as I've shown in my previous video, you have the option to switch to using one or the other. Could this change in the next Rails release? I don't know but I do think that Webpack is becoming more of an industry standard driven by its use in the JavaScript community. Only time will tell how committed the Rails community is in maintaining the Sprockets gem. And at this time, David Heinemeyer Hansen seems to be an advocate for Sprockets. He seems to believe that it provides some engineering advantages from a technical standpoint. Well, my personal opinion is that application code is more robust when outside dependencies are minimized. Your program becomes less vulnerable to incompatibilities when trying to upgrade, and having fewer pieces to manage improves maintainability. So my opinion is that it's best to choose one or the other, and just because Webpack is not going to go away, my preference in starting a new project would be to remove sprockets and just use Webpacker. A choice faced by any developer starting a new web application now is deciding how the front end is going to be designed. Modern JS frameworks like React, Vue, Angular, and Ember are very powerful in that they allow the developer to build quick, feature-rich websites that feel and behave more like applications running in the web browser, much more dynamic than basic web pages. And from a technical standpoint, it takes a lot of programming infrastructure to accomplish this. Very complex client-side JavaScript is necessary, and this is where these modern frameworks help out. They provide you the structure and design opinions to build a very dynamic application. They're so complex that the front-end code often gets split into many libraries and class files, much like a large Rails application, which are best compiled and slimmed down for delivery to the client-side browser via a tool like Webpack. Now, while these modern JavaScript frameworks give you flexibility in the features you can build for your website, they do come at a cost of complexity in the implementation. It takes a lot of work, knowledge, skill, and hours of time to write a front end using a platform like React or Vue. Like Rails, they have their own upgrade cycles which introduce new coding standards and deprecations. So if your website is going to be very simple and static like a personal blog, you have to ask yourself whether all the trouble of maintaining two separate infrastructures is worth the time. Choosing a front-end framework boils down to a trade-off of how dynamic you want your end user's experience to be versus how much time and knowledge you have in the choice of frameworks available. And once you've made that decision of which framework you're going to use in your JavaScript, as a Rails developer, you have to make another choice as to how the front end will be rendered in respect to the Rails architecture. Will you choose the traditional model view controller means of displaying your website? Or will you split the application into two halves? One for the JavaScript front end that handles all of the page layouts and rendering, and another half in which Rails performs the information management on the back end. Let's take a look at both of these options. And we'll start with the traditional Rails model view controller architecture. A user on the site makes a web request to your application. Rails receives it through the controller, uses models and other Ruby objects to process the data to be returned, and then uses the view templates to construct an HTML page that it renders to the user. Sometimes there's JavaScript involved to make the web pages feel a little more dynamic. In older versions of Rails, jQuery was used for this purpose, which works well for very simple display features, such as popping up an error message or presenting the result of submitting a form. That's a more traditional Rails app. Now, in recent years, thanks to React, 
an alternative design and front end is available known as the single page application. In this case, a single HTML page is delivered to the client browser. It has a JavaScript on it that invokes a framework like React or Vue. React or Vue will then manipulate the HTML itself on that page within the browser as needed. The JavaScript makes requests to the web server for information, and all of the information in the request is passed as pure JSON data. Usually a protocol like RESTful Endpoints or GraphQL is used to determine the specifics on how that data exchange takes place. The Rails backend API will then do its data processing, but in this case, it will skip the view rendering entirely and provide a response as just plain JSON data. Then the JavaScript framework within the client browser manipulates the HTML page to display the informational updates. The end user's website experience can be a lot quicker and more dynamic in this way. It's great for handling very complex sorts of business data where you have forms that might be populated and changed in multiple steps. Also, state management is a lot easier because your framework like React holds all of the user's information related to that page in the local browser, which in a lot of cases takes some of the programming burden and assumptions off of the backend design. For example, in a multi-step form, the backend won't have to keep track of where a user is in filling out all of the individual fields on that form, some of which may appear and disappear as different options are selected. This method of implementation has become so mainstream that as of Rails 5, a new feature was included that allows you to initialize a new Rails application that's streamlined for delivering API request calls only. And it doesn't include the view rendering libraries. So to see an example of a traditional Rails app rendering, check out my last video where we made a simple website. To give you an example of a single page application, let's look at this app I made called US Treasury Yield Curve. It's a website that displays graphs of current and historical interest rates. The front end is powered by Vue.js and the back end is written in Ruby on Rails which pulls the historical interest rate data from a government website, it stores it in a backend database, and serves any requested information to the front end through its RESTful API. All the information in the web page state, such as which day to display the graph is maintained by view on the client end. Now let's take a look at the source code. This application is split into two main folders, one for the Rails backend and one for the view front end. Each framework is set up to be entirely independent. This split front end and back end is a very typical arrangement you now see in web application design. One of the nice things about this is that we can completely rebuild either side of the application in another framework and it will work just as well as long as the RESTful API calls between the two sides follow the same data formats. I could switch the Rails back end to Python Django or a JavaScript-based server-side framework. I can also change this view front end to React. Designing the application this way makes upgrading frameworks incrementally more easy because each monolith has fewer dependencies, but it does come with the downside in that now there are two monoliths to maintain for this simple website. Another advantage to this setup is that it will be easy for a JavaScript specialist to make changes on the front end. So a different programmer who knows just JavaScript can edit that front end without having to touch any Rails code. You can try to use a complex JavaScript framework like React with Rails templates and compile all of its libraries through Webpacker. However, my opinion is that trying to design your application in this way introduces unnecessary complexity. I think that if you're going to use a heavy duty JavaScript framework like React or Vue, it's better to follow that system's best practice and compile the front end independently under their own settings. Don't use the Rails view templating engine at all. These heavy duty JavaScript front end frameworks can handle all aspects of a user interface on their own and are conceptually designed around the premise that they will be hosted and compiled as their own separate projects. Trying to run against this design philosophy by commingling React with Rails view templates 
will make your code more complicated in getting it to work all together. So my opinion here is that just because you can probably successfully do it, the effort it would take in getting it to work, not to mention making it less familiar to a pure JavaScript engineer, would probably offset any marginal benefits of merging the two. If you want to avoid the burden of managing separate projects for a simple website, the traditional Rails application with the rendered front-end templates is still a viable option. I just think that integrating a standalone JavaScript framework might not be the best choice to use. There are other options that you can use to make those templates a little bit more dynamic. jQuery is still alive and well, and is handy if you want to make your user interface dynamic in very small ways, such as triggering menus or pop-ups. You can still also use many JavaScript UI component libraries with Webpacker. As long as the data that you're handling isn't wildly complex, Rails templates can probably be fine. StimulusJS is a new framework introduced in 2018 and created by some of the same people behind Rails. It aims to solve some of the complexity of front-end implementation by trying to offer middle ground that favors view template rendering and enables those templates to have the same level of dynamic features provided by the heavy-duty JavaScript frameworks. I think this is an interesting concept worth exploring and one that would have to be for another video. So the key takeaways that I want to present here in this video is that as a Rails developer starting a new application, you now have some architectural choices in how to build your front-end user interface. JavaScript has changed a lot, and your choice of JavaScript framework will affect how you make use of Ruby on Rails. Webpacker or Sprockets still work for JavaScript, but if you're going to be using a full-featured JavaScript framework to make your website or web application more feature-rich, it might make sense to consider the single-page application structure and not use a Rails-integrated asset compiler at all. So this concludes my video. I hope you found this information useful and the opinions valuable. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel for future content like this. See you next time.